All right, listen up. You can do more than just hear us. You can also watch us on the video feed. Do it live at NBC1260.com. Welcome back to Beyond the Curve, providing strategic insights on international business and international law. I'm Jeffrey O'Brien, alongside my co-host, Dr. Adriana Sanford. Also joining us, Hugh Wolf and Luis Rodriguez. So, all right, let's talk about cultural intelligence. As we decide to uh, invest our time and our money entering the different global markets, cultural intelligence is something uh, our employees need to be more aware of. What kinds of trouble can come from not paying attention to and training for cultural intelligence? It can be something minor. It can be a spat in the office. To it can be loss of profits. I mean, it just depends on the market. It depends on how bad the situation is. Up to now, we've been talking about products and selling your product. Now we're talking about selling yourself and selling your service, selling yourself. When we've got international assignments and we're sending our employees overseas, we need to make sure that we give them the tools so that they can be successful. It's not only about having your degree or your, you know, 14, 15 years of work experience or 10 years of work experience. It's about knowing people. And, right. you know, for some, it's common sense. You know, there are people out there that they're just natural and, uh, and, 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 and they know how to treat, they know how to read the cues. Um, but let's face it, depending on the country you're in and depending on, on, on the culture, it may work and it may not work. We've got collective countries and we've got individualistic countries. If I am in Mexico and I'm going to Chile, chances are I'm going to get it right because right. there's so many similarities. But let's say I'm in, I'm in Canada and I've decided to go into Venezuela. Uh, there, there are certain things that you have to really think about before taking those steps. Uh, they're stages. You've got the, the cultural knowledge, then you've got the mindfulness, and then you've got the actual skill set. And right. it takes a while. It's, 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 it's a lot of practice. What you do is you become local. If the people are mindful of the time, you'll be mindful of the time. And if the people are mindful or a little bit more informal, well, don't get mad because they're going to be more informal. It's nothing wrong. It's just the way they are. And the more that you do that, the more successful that you will be in. If you are the executive of that corporation there and you are not following the norms of the country and you try to impose yours, that might cost you money. When you go into another country, you need to humble yourself. Yes. You need to realize the one most important tip is knowing you know nothing. When you go right. overseas. You can't go over right. there and uh, say, well, these are little backwater people. This is a third world. I am uh, from America. You have exactly. to have more of a, a humble approach. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to love that country. Don't just go over there and think I'm going to go to work, 8 to 7 right. or whatever the time is. You need to go over there and say, what's their culture? What do they eat? What's in their environment? And, and really begin to enjoy and feel it. Yeah, what works here does not work someplace else. You can't say you understand that culture because you don't. Right. A, a really important point that I think a lot of people miss is stereotypes actually cause problems and barriers. Sure. What you want to do is you want to go in with a very open mind and you have to be conscientious and continually. It's something you have to practice. When somebody is talking to you, you need to look for clues. You need to look for for the way their their expression in their eyes, the body way their, their their body mm -hmm. language is so, yep. so, important so important because what they're saying and what you're communicating. They're totally different. Uh, thing absolutely. Can be. And sometimes the rules are differently played depending on where you're at. As far as the numbers go, I mean, 70% of the companies that try to go overseas fail due to the fact of these cultural intelligent issues. It's, it's a big problem. It's, it's a real serious problem because it's something that's overlooked. It's something so, mm -hmm. uh, so basic, but yet we overlook it because we're thinking so much about the product, about business. Do some of the companies that fail overseas even realize it had anything to do with cultural intelligence? Do they some like, do managers make excuses? Do uh, salespeople say, well, this, these people don't like... How, I mean, how many times do the, the, uh, the companies not realize that's what's happened? I have seen it. Uh, it's very <laughs> often. As, yeah. as, and I have seen it that they redesigned the product when the issue was just the way that you were talking to the people. And just let me add one thing here. But the companies that get it right succeed. Yes, and are loved. All right, thanks, guys. This has been Beyond the Curve, providing strategic insights on international business and international law. Dr. Adriana Sanford. 
Hugh Wolf, Luis Rodriguez. I'm Jeffrey O'Brien. We'll see you next time right here on NBC 1260. C1260.